Kia ora everybody and welcome to the first meeting and I believe it's uh, quite historic, the first ever meeting of a Central Otago District Council Exec Committee and certainly if it isn't in that regard, it is um, the first time that a Central Otago District Council Committee is met by um, Zoom. So this will um, be something of a experiment. I'm sure that we will get it right though. The reason that we are meeting uh, of the Executive Committee called under urgency is that there are two matters that cannot be uh, handled within the time frame that's necessary for them to be handled um, by full council uh, with the requirements that full council um, has to undertake for advertising. That's the reason that we're doing this. So we've got two matters on the agenda. Firstly, um, obviously I'll call for any apologies and there are none and obviously um, there's no <laughs> minutes because this has never happened before. So we have two matters before us on the agenda. The first one is a report on the remission of rates penalties. How I'm going to operate this meeting is as follows. Um, we will hear from the report writer and our first report writer is go the first report is going to be presented by Leanne. Can I just get people who aren't speaking to put themselves on mute please? There's an awful lot of background noise coming through. Um, so I'll ask the report writer to um, speak first and um, then I will have, uh, I will go around the group um, to get each person's questions or comments and then we will take a vote um, on, on the motions that are put before us. Um, so that is going to be a pretty simple um, matter. If people want to speak um, or need to, and that includes staff, um, need to talk outside of that cycle, just drop it into chat and I'll keep uh, my eye on that if there's anything needs to be added. So just before we go to that first report, um, I note uh, that we have declarations of interest and that on the agenda are our interests. Are there any further declarations to be made before we progress? No, thank you. Then Leanne, I'll turn over to you please to take us through that first report. Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. So a number of councils have explored the fact that we have to send out our fourth instalment or district councils, our fourth instalment um, to our ratepayers and having the, under, the, the empathy that they're under lockdown right now and that is going to hurt some people and we acknowledge that. However, with the best of legal advice, we have no option but to send out this um, the invoice. We are concerned that there will be a number of people who are not able to, obviously they can't get into our office to pay and we're also conscious that for some this is going to be really difficult. So we then spoke to our legal team and this is the collective councils whether we could delay applying penalties and legally we're not allowed to do that either because this is what we've adopted in the annual plan that we currently abide by. So as a result of that I have um, asked council if they will consider or executive council committee if they will consider us being able to apply a essentially a blanket penalty to this fourth installment and to do that I've written a policy that's outside of our normal um, remissions penalty policy which we have in place. This prevents this ensures that every rate power who is not able to pay their rates um, by the due date um, don't have to individually apply for the penalty and that we can apply penalties and then remit the penalties and write to those affected ratepayers to see if we can put a payment plan in place so it's cleared by end of June. So with that in mind I'm asking that um, Council ex considers adopting this new policy that, um, that's before them today. Happy to take questions. <laughs> Thank you, Leanne. Neil, I'll start with you. Comments or questions for Leanne, please. Um, I think it, it's perfectly sensible um, policy to put in place given the time that we're in. The only question I want to just clarify is that um, there's nothing to stop anybody not paying, is there? Whether they can or can't. We're not going to get into the detail of whether they can or can't. So people could just choose not to pay because they don't want to pay. Um, that's correct. Um, I think you'll still find there'll be a genuine group of uh, a general group of people who will still pay their rates by their due date. 
but you're absolutely correct. Um, this is a public um, forum and everybody could choose not to pay their rates um, by due date. Yeah, that, the that will be alternative that will be to. Sorry, carry on. The alternative to that is that everybody individually applies and that could, um, given that we've only got one rating officer, put a lot of pressure on a small team when we're trying to get um, the business up and running again for in other areas and, and helping people and getting ready for an annual plan. So it, it, it's a um, chicken and egg scenario, I guess. Yep, no question and answer. Thank you. I can, I can live with that probably. Thank you, Neil. Stu. Yeah, well, it just has to be done. That would be the only concern is we're trying to do a pretty hard amount of work in getting the rate to a level that we don't want a, a lot of people you taking it up and using it, but I'm hoping that the goodness of central target people will only need to use it if they really have to. Thank well, you. That's my, my thinking too. Yeah, that, that's Thank all. You. That's the only that's the only issue I've got is that people take advantage and we don't get our rates in. And it's only for one instalment, so it's not for. Yeah. It's only for this instalment for. It's not for any that they may not have paid prior, and yeah. it's not for next year. This is purely for this fourth instalment. No, good as God. Thank you, Stephen. No, I'm comfortable. I've read through it. In fact, I've read through it twice because it's one part I didn't understand. So the first of July, then they fall back into penalty. Is that correct? Correct. So, as for okay. whatever we adopt in the new annual plan. Okay. Yes. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Martin. Next, I think um, it's it's doable <clears throat> and especially it, it allows um, those people who may have difficulty paying. I'm, I'm just thinking of actually accessing the council. So many of our older citizens are still paying their rates by checks because I see them coming in and paying them. So it's going to um, take the burden off those people. They're not going to feel guilty about not paying it on time. And I think if we get the word out there, it's going to um, cause um, a lessening of grief for a lot of our, our, our seniors. Right. Thank you. So I'll take us to page. Um, I'm working on a different computer here, so I'll take us to the page that the report's on. This computer doesn't tell me what page it is, and we have two recommendations. A, that we receive the report and accept the level of significant and B, Council adopts the remission policy for penalties. And I think we have to emphasise we have members, members of the media and um, we are watching. So this is for the penalty payment on instalment four of rates for the 2019-2020 financial year as a result of the COVID pandemic. So, um, and we'll have the proper wording. I didn't read it exactly right there, but it's important that it's noted that this is to get us through the fourth instalment, those bills go out, I believe, tomorrow. People won't get the penalty applied to that, and then we have a chance to look at a fuller package with full council uh, for the annual plan from there. That's correct, Leanne? Correct. They probably won't receive their rates invoice until mid next week. By the time right. it, it gets signed off, it, it hits the letterbox. We start mailing out on the 17th, so it'll be mid next week with the way we do um, snail mail these days. Thank you. And just one question. Um, what percentage do you know, Leanne, of ratepayers are direct debit as opposed to paying on invoice? Do you have any idea of that? Or that's a bit of an unfair question to spring on No, sorry, I don't. I'll be able to get that information, but I don't have it at hand. That would be of interest. OK. We'll any that. further questions, councillors? Just speak up now if you do. No, thank you. In that case, I will move the motions A and B on the reports. Would somebody second those? I'll do that. Thank you, Neil. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? That is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our second report is in relation to the hearings panel. And uh, Louise, you'll be talking us through that, please. Uh, before Louise does, ah, thank you, uh, given that I am um, this the, yeah, the delegation that I'll get is subject to this report. I, I, I have a conflict, but I guess I don't. Um, so to keep things clean, I'm happy to be available for any questions, but I won't vote in the matter. Thank you. If that could be recorded. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, so is it David or Louise presenting this? I think Louise. Um, 
Thanks, Tim. It's, it's actually David if he's here, but I'm not sure if he's joined the meeting because he was at a controller's meeting. Yep, oh, he's here. You are there, David, but you're very quiet. Okay, I'll pick up a bit. A bit more? How's that? That's better. Okay, thank you, David. The, the, the meeting is yours. Okay, it's a fairly uh, straightforward report, um, basically, again, to allow us to continue some of our functions um, under the current COVID restrictions. Uh, what we've identified and working with other councils and the Ministry for the Environment is that there are avenues we can take to help um, continue that work and uh, also minimising our risk. So, done a bit of work in the space of our hearings panel and um, how we're going to run in future meetings. We've obviously, got the April meeting um, back to May, um, pending restrictions being lifted. And there's an opportunity within that to um, change our delegation slightly to allow basically applications that really don't need to have a formal hearing as such, where it can be decided on the papers um, to be signed off perhaps by the, the hearing chairperson that you've identified, or you might decide to, to change the delegation, but we've recommended it go to the, the hearing chairperson um, under quite sort of strict um, limitations there as we've identified in the report. There's nothing also stopping the, the chairperson um, deciding that it should be heard or wanting to involve the other hearing panel members. So it's it's not a mandatory thing, it's just saying that where possible we would um, allow those applications to be decided in this particular way. And it's really quite a limited subset of applications that we're talking about. So the other issue right. I guess is whether this, whether this delegation would be permanent or just during the um, period of uh, restrictions. We could leave it as it is, um, leave it sort of ongoing, or on that basis, it could be reviewed if we felt we wanted to bring it back to the hearing panel um, as it previously has been. So there's no sort of um, requirement to have it locked in for a certain period of time, but it can always be reviewed if um, if we feel it's not working for whatever reason. So you've got the two options there. Keep it as a, an open-ended delegation or put some time constraints on it. Um, other okay, than that, thank you, uh, David. Um, that really? Thank you, we're just having trouble hearing you again. I'm so going I'm going to go in reverse order and noting that um, Martin and Stephen, you both sit as um, hearings panel members. So um, I'm going to start with you guys. Martin, do you have any comments, particularly in terms of the time frame? Oh, I think um, David's quite right. I don't think we need to put a time constraint on it as long as we're under this COVID uh, emergency because it would be silly to say two weeks and then and in two weeks time we have to go back and revisit it so um, because the situation is really open-ended let's let's review it once we're in the we see some light at the end of the tunnel. The other option could be that it stays in place until we go to level two but we could jump in and out of level two so I tend to think keep it open-ended. Stephen what are your thoughts? No, I agree with what's just been said, basically. So I don't. Have, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Um, I guess if you, if they do chop and change between the levels, then there is some danger if we, if we cease to do this, um, in the short term. In other words, mm -hmm. if we get back to no issues and then there is an issue, then it just becomes complicated. So I agree. Yeah. Stu. Stewie? Might be on mute. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I just say I agree with it. Just leave it open ended. Um, Tim, could I make okay, a comment? We lost you again there, Stu, but we heard you say you'll agree with it. Um, uh oh. I wonder, Tim, could I make a okay. comment? Yes, please. 
Um, in terms of efficiency, uh, I think what the hearings panel have found over the years is that um, certain items come in front of them that are of a very minor nature and it's because they're non-complying. Uh, delegations registers a bit of a blunt instrument for sorting out what needs to go to a hearings panel and what can be done under delegated authority. And this, um, this change would actually enable those minor matters to go to the chair without the need for a full hearing, which is, of course is time and cost on an applicant. So um, I think the suggestion to have it open-ended is a good one and trial how that works. All right, thank you, Louise. It seems that we have a general consensus that um, we leave it as it is. Um, the, the recommendations in front of us are open-ended and um, I have no doubt that once we're through um, to the other side, whatever that may look like, uh, we'll bring it back into um, its present form. But given we don't know what how long that's going to be, the sensible option, what seems to be the uh, agreement amongst the group um, is to um, move forward with that. So I'm going to move recommendations A and B. Would somebody second that, please? I'll second that. Thank you. That was Councillor Jeffrey seconding that. Any further discussion, councillors? In that case, all those in favour, aye. 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 <coughs> and against. And that's carried with noting uh, Neil's abs. In abs Neil didn't vote. Um, right, that brings us to the end of the agenda items for this meeting. I think uh, that went extraordinarily well, given we haven't done this before, and nothing occurs well without um, people working in the background. So uh, a very um, heartfelt thanks to staff uh, for getting this underway and for making it work so smoothly and also to um, to the members of the executive committee. Thank you for your efforts um, in making that work so very well. And Rebecca, I'll get you to report uh, back to full council. So um, without any, uh, there's no need to set the date for the next meeting because we don't know when that will be or if indeed there will be one. So I'll bring this meeting of the executive committee to a close with well, thanks to everybody. Kia ora, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.